in the late 1970s and early 80s, a group of artists moved from the streets of New York, where their canvases were subway cars and brick walls, to the tony confines of exclusive art galleries. In a new exhibition, the Museum of Fine Arts charts the course of artist Jean-Michel Basquiat and the hip-hop generation. Blazing off the walls of the Museum of Fine Arts, the massive paintings of Jean-Michel Basquiat. He was a New York street artist of the 1970s and 80s who became a darling of the art world. Three years ago, one of his paintings sold for more than $100 million at auction. Legend, icon, maverick. He bore all the crowns so frequently depicted in his work before his young, untimely death. He often gets uh, described as the kind of sole black genius uh, artistically of the time. And what we're trying to show is that he absolutely was an incredibly genius artist. Uh, but he was surrounded by his peers who were on a similar journey with him. This new exhibition at the MFA is the first to examine Basquiat and his fellow artists in the hip hop generation who changed the chemistry and sound of New York. <laughs> Ramelzy, Fab Five Freddy, Basquiat. They were among a crop of fresh-faced art world outsiders from marginalized communities. But they made New York theirs, says co-curator Liz Munsell. They came from many different boroughs, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and then they began to converge downtown. They were getting a little bit older, and they saw this incredible scene of 1980s creatives, people like Madonna around, and they became part of this club scene. But before that, they were labeled graffiti artists, pursued by police for tagging buildings and a most prized canvas, the New York City subway. Painting subway cars guaranteed their work would be seen by thousands of people as trains raced throughout the city. There's a, a lot of uh, chaos for the eye to see every day. Writer and musician Greg Tate is the show's co-curator. He knew most of the artists featured here when they all began to mix with performers, filmmakers and musicians in New York's downtown scene. This is a youth movement, and in America, youth is everything. So whoever's leading that charge is going to win. What the outsiders called graffiti, the artists simply called writing, a form Basquiat noted had dated to ancient times, and what artist Lady Pink said was like calligraphy. But it was all a language the artists shared. Abstracting it, coding it, crossing it out. They really, um, in the vein of hip-hop music, are incorporating really whatever they can get their hands on and very freely in an unfiltered way, getting all of that into their canvases. But these artists wanted off the streets and into the galleries. They demanded they be heard and seen. The art world took notice, and in the U.S., two of them, Keith Haring and Basquiat, rocketed into the stratosphere. I could see the handwriting on the wall. It was mine. I've made my mark in the world, and it's made its mark on me. Basquiat's work was fueled by his interest in history, not to mention the years of museum visits he'd made with his mother while growing up. He charted his thoughts in notebooks. Went to a party, went to one party at his house once, and... Um, you know, walk to uh, walk past his um, you know bedroom on the way to to the loo. I saw there was um, uh, like a video of Superfly that was on, and then um, you know, and then all these art books stacked up. So when he wasn't painting, you know, he was in there just you know studying the artists he liked. Basquiat's work is also often populated by random bits of anatomy. When he was seven, he was hospitalized after a car accident and developed a fascination with the book Grey's Anatomy. But it's this crown that is most ubiquitous in his work. My, my work is about three things, um, royalty, hero, heroism, and the streets, right? So he was also, uh, as someone who had gone to, to all the major galleries and museums and didn't see any black people represented there, he's letting you know that... Um, you know, his royalty is a street royalty. That reign would extend into the art world, where Basquiat achieved superstardom. But in 1988, he died of a drug overdose. He was only 27, but he'd managed to see his community of artists get their due. And beyond that, says Liz Munsell, they began to influence the A-list artists they worked to be alongside. 
Frank Stella, you can you can see his referencing, and he also he also notes that he was looking at, at graffiti and trying to find a different surface for his painting um, in his late 80s works. It was a hard-fought acceptance, and for it, this singular group of artists hang together still.